Hello and welcome. Today is the third flower shaping video and if you've seen any of the first two you might want to jump ahead to it's right around minute three it's just after minute three because uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the tools that I use and just some of the basics of flower shaping. So on this, I'm pulling out some punches and I just wanted to demonstrate that you can use your punches or really any image, you know, if it's a die or whatever, and kind of customize it. So I really like the scalloped edge on the small, smaller five point uh, flower petal. So I'm getting that same look by just taking my scissors and free cutting, you know, free form cutting them on the bigger flower. So just kind of think outside the box on some of your images and you'll be amazed at the looks you can achieve. Here's some more punches that I use and I thought originally these were um, snowflakes and I didn't ever use them. I just didn't care for that look, but now I've started using them as the centers of my flowers and they really work well. So this is just a bottle of water and then there's score tape, there's foam tape. These are all the tools that I use. I'm showing that there's different depths of foam tape and that kind of important because as you make 3d flowers sometimes you want things popped up more or less and it's nice there's different kinds of liquid adhesive the one in the little bottle is the art glitter glue and then I absolutely love the liquid glass from close to my heart and I pulled out a whole bunch of different shaping tools these um, the set of three are from McGill and it comes with a um, reverse tweezers and I think a foam mat is in there for and that's what I started with and I still love those but if you don't have reverse tweezers I pulled out some uh, paper clips that you can see those also work you'll need a quilling tool um, paper piercer is nice these are all things that you can use some of the tools aren't available anymore they were sold by close to my heart years ago and they're not available but that doesn't mean that you can't find something similar or something that works for you so this again, I'm going to show you is a dense foam shaping mat that close to my heart doesn't sell. The longer one was from a ruler with a piercing. It was like for stitching edges. So just different size foams. And then the soap is sometimes on paper, it doesn't glide as well, your shaping tool. So if you put a little soap on the end, it gives your flat, your yeah, your flower shapes a nice smell, but it also just helps the tool glide across it. So some of these are cut with a Cricut. Um, some of them are dyes, like all the leaves in the middle are dyes. Uh, the first video I did was with mostly dye cuts. That leaf is also from a dye. Um, oh no, sorry, that, was, that leaf is from the Cricut, but there's other leaves from the dye. This video is going to concentrate on 3D flowers that I would think would be for more projects and on gifts not something that you're going to put in a scrapbook or um, in the mail because they definitely will have too much dimension for that so I'm going to shape two sets of these rose petals and one of them I'm just using my fingers to kind of shape and um, crimp and the other one I'm going to do a more rolled technique and I'm trying to show you that you can use different tools and if you have a Cricut it's probably a tool you already have this is just the scraper for the Cricut map and this works really well to help. Um, you're kind of breaking the fibers or softening the fibers in the paper and that's what give them, gives them the bend. And these you'll notice it's almost like it cuts it with one leaf missing and a little tab. And I use the red score tape just because it's very strong and will help hold those, um, the shape of the rows together. And I need to apologize, I'm, we have allergies, it's pollen season around here, and being new to California, my body is not used to some of these pollens. So now I'm just using the shimmer brush, and this is, I believe, in a purple, and I'm just running it along the edges to cover the white cardstock that, uh, the white core that close to my heart cardstock has. And again, it just adds a richness to it. I did the same thing on the centers of the flowers with a black shimmer brush, and it's kind of cool because it covers the white, but it also gives it um, a darker color, but it just a little bit of shine almost looks like the, the tips of the petals are wet. So here I'm just going through and adding the score tape because it's so small to the 
petals and shaping those up. And like I said, I'm just using my fingers to crimp everything. And I um, blunted the point from where they come together. Just that's the look I like. Everybody can kind of do their own thing. I feel like they settle, they nest into each other better as you shape them. So I'm using my fingers to kind of bend the petals back a little bit. And then when I glue them in together, I'll actually glue them so that the petals offset. They're not stacked, just one right on top of the other. For stacking the flowers, I use a liquid glue because it gives you time to kind of turn the petals to make sure that they're off stacked. It also, for me, this art glitter glue, um, it just welds itself together. It's fantastic. So I'm just using a Sharpie to kind of hold the point down while I grab some other things and decide what leaves I want to use. That was just an old horseradish jar that's on my desk that I sometimes use it for holding my glue upside down, but you'll see that it was also good for kind of helping to hold the sides of the rose together while it dries. And now I'm just using the scoring tool from the scoreboard to do some veining on the leaves. And again, you can just kind of shape them with your fingers if you want. I've known to push the leaf directly into the palm of my hand as I'm cupping it. Just anything that works for you that, that you think makes the flower for, you know, the flower, the leaf shaped for your project. So now I'm going to show you with the quilling tool, the rolling technique. And I think most people prefer a rolled rose, but if you've looked at any of the old, old-fashioned tea rose or the wild roses, they, to me, look more like the, um, the crimped shape where you use your fingers of the first one I assembled. You can see here, once again, I'm just taking the shimmer brush and um, putting some shimmer and sparkles and covering the white edges of the roses. Again, I just think it gives you a better um, end result because you get to see more color than white, especially when you roll flowers. I do a lot of quilling and you need to have a solid edge because that's mainly what you see. So here I'm just going to use my tweezers to hold that first coil together. I'm going back to kind of shape the original flowers now that they're dry. You can go back and, and just play with it. And this is again a more crinkled, um, rough look like I said more of a um, old-fashioned or a wild rose look and here you'll notice that you don't have to have the quilling tool to go ahead and roll these you can just use your fingers or I think later on I take the end of the piercing tool to kind of shape some of the petals to get them into that rolled look and I'm just poking my um, tweezers into the center of the flowers to hold those together and we'll just add each layer and I'll probably shape the leaves again so all of it is just what works for you and what uh, the one recommendation is from my point of view is you go ahead if you're doing a quilling flower because they have those you go ahead and roll it all shape it and then I'll go back and use tweezers or a bone folder or something and bend the, the tops of the petals back um, it just gives it like an, a flower opening a more I think it's a more natural look so here I am I have the piercing tool and I'm using that to just kind of curl each of the petals individually towards the center and you curl it more than you really want to because it will relax as the paper you know as you go ahead and assemble your papers because you'll be pulling it apart and I tell you paper clips are wonderful for holding together these kind of things so here on the um, leaves I'm just using the paper piercer and pinching my fingers around the paper pierce piercing end to make the veins I don't know why I don't have words today sorry gonna add some ink you can kind of see that pops the veins right out um, and you can decide if you want which side you want front or back. I love using my hands for shaping flowers sometimes more than tools. It just, it, I don't know, it's a hands-on thing, I guess, and you just have a better control of it. And I love this little rose. You can do this in multiple colors. You can add shimmer brush on all the leaves. You can also go back and add liquid glass onto like one of the petals to make it look like a drop of rain, you know, dew. So here I'm taking the um, dye 
It's the 3D flower die from Close to My Heart. And I had just cut them in white. And I also cut another one in white. And I inked the edges in green to make it like the leaves. And I use spray mist. And it's just a homemade spray mist that I make. And I have, like I said, on here, 12 to 20 drops of reinker. And then rubbing alcohol. And I just have the old three ounce spray bottles that close to my house close to my heart sold so that's how I know the recipe and you can get spray bottles from Walmart and you just need to up the recipe because I think their spray bottles are closer to a 30 a 10 ounce bottle um, so you would need to triple the recipe so now I'm gonna um, take this and kind of put it in a cup to keep as it dries because that alcohol is wet and the and the paper is wet and if you just leave it on your um, desk it's going to kind of relax and broaden out where by just putting it in a bowl um, and these are just plastic bowls that I picked up at the Dollar Tree I've also used egg cartons when I've been making like a whole bunch of poinsettias for Christmas cards um, just something that you can keep it in until it dries and now I'm pulling out it's from the Cricut but it's the same kind of look and it's just done bigger so here are some daffodils from the Cricut uh, art uh, not art it's the flower market cartridge and I will have a link below for that through my Cricut affiliate so um, I would love it if you purchase that from me it doesn't cost you any more I just get to um, get some benefit from it a little kickback and here I'm just taking some um, orange I think it's a tangerine ink pad and I'm doing both sides of the centers of the flowers just because when you um, bend these up you can see both the inside and the outside so I did one daffodil already and this time I'm cutting that center cup shorter just because I like how the centers poke through it better and are a little more open it's not quite as deep of a cup on the daffodil and you'll get to see how both of those look one with the deeper cup and one with the cup that I cut down and like I'm just using the scoring tool for all of this so you don't have to have all the different tools one tool will do so much for you so you just crease the center of each of your petals grab this base and then it's it's actually six pointed on the base so you can know exactly where to put your petals you just line them up in between two of the flowers from that green or two of the points from that green um, base and now you just carefully put glue along the edge of the cup. This is the bigger cup for the first flower that I did. And then I put the centers of it and you just poke them through the cup. And it's, they're about the same size as the sides. So when, once you actually get it to adhere down to the center of the flower, it, there's not much of the points poking up. So that's why I went ahead and cut this one down so you can see the difference here and you can decide what works for you just keep in mind that these are your projects and you make them how you think they should look have fun with it um, don't be afraid it's paper um, for the most part we always have more <laughs> so pushing the centers down those are the two daffodils put them on some stems and you would be set to go there all right our next flower is kind of a um, pansy and I have um, I think you're going to see two of them, but I don't think I actually shaped both of them or took the time to show you. But on this pansy that you cut from the flower market cartridge, there's a little slit in the flat side that you push one on top of the other. So it literally bends up the sides of the flower. So it, it gives it some dimension right off the bat without doing anything other than folding one of the flaps over top of the other one and gluing them down. And this is where I really like having the paper clips. And I will say that not all paper clips are created equal for me. I like the ones that are coated. They tend to um, be gentler on the paper that I'm putting them on where the uncoated ones are just the plain metal ones. I sometimes find that they either have a rougher surface and when I'm taking them apart, I need to be more careful with them. So just something to keep in mind if you go out to buy some paper clips for your paper crafting. So now I'm just taking the circle that comes as part of the image in Cricut and I'm just gluing the outside petals first and then I'll go back in and glue the inside petals. I needed to give it a moment for those first two petals to 
um, glue for a minute or for the glue to dry for a minute, excuse me. So once you get the outside done, you can kind of then, and I grab just an, I have another set of reverse tweeze, squeeze, um, tweezers, excuse me. <laughs> so once that outside is done, then you just offset the inside petals between like where the gap is for the base. And I'm going to set this aside, I believe, and let it dry. And I didn't show you all of the inking and all of the, um, gluing together the petals to shape them as I did with the first one. But you can see how the inking, just adding another little step to your process, it doesn't take that long, but it really adds some depth to it. So we're going to follow the same process of just uh, folding the flaps together and gluing them. But before I do that, I'm just using my scoring tool to kind of bend the tops of these petals back a little bit just kind of give them a natural curve and we're back to I'm jumped ahead and, and back to the curve but you can kind of see the difference that just adding that extra step of the scoring tool and and kind of like ribbon curling you just kind of pull it against the the paper to break those fibers it really softens the edges they're not quite as harsh and you can go back in that first flower and achieve some of that and I'll show you that but it feels like from my experience that the, if you do it up front before you glue it together unlike the roses where the roses you want to coil first and then fold them back excuse me about that my voice but um so the roses you do after you coil these pansies I like to shape before and I think some of that is individual petaled flowers kind of rule of thumb, you shape those before you assemble. So now I was just shaping some of the center um, for the flowers and I did decided to do two layers. You can kind of see on that top flower that I didn't do the black along the edge so you can see the white um, centers. And those are just things that you have to decide if, you know, what time effort you want to put into them. But Really, uh, you can, the sky's the limit, you can make some beautiful bouquets out of just the same flower over and over again. So I'll link the uh, first video in the series so you can take a look at that. And if you haven't subscribed, I would love that. If you like what you see, please like my video as that helps other creators see this as well. Have a blessed day. Thank you.